Hello, welcome to today's episode. Special edition, hook 'em and cook 'em. And this guy is gonna be the guest of honor. Today we got some beautiful redfish, some lovely reds. We're going to prepare those tonight, but a big part of hooking them and cooking them in between, we have to clean them. Tonight's recipe is pretty simple. It's black and redfish, but it is my own flair on black and redfish. We're going to uh, add a few ingredients as some cilantro, some tomatoes, some onions, some green peppers and stuff like that. But it's a very simple, easy recipe. Anybody can make it home quick and easy. People ask me all the time when we're fishing, as soon as we start putting those fish in the cooler, they're like, how do you cook them? What's your recipes? And we're gonna share one of those with you today. First thing we gotta do is we gotta clean this fish. Today we had a beautiful trip on the flats of Redfish Bay. We were actually kayak fishing today. Amazing weather for the middle of December. It's like 85 degrees out here today. We were fishing in short pants, bare feet in the water. Absolutely beautiful day. Caught a couple of them on the fly, threw some soft plastic lures. We got some nice fish on a variety of lures. They weren't going for the top water today, but we got them on the K Wigglers soft plastic and we got a couple on the fly rod today as well. Kitty cat gets the fajita. Kitty, 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 kitty. Now we're in the kitchen. We've got these nice fillets that we just cleaned, got them ready to go. What I like to do, and some people like to cook them in complete size, I like to cut these down to smaller pieces. That way they get a little more seasoning on the sides and all of that spreads around a little bit. This little small fillet on the bottom, I take and cut that. These little pieces here, I'm gonna save for later for another recipe. But for today's adventure in the kitchen, we want the nice thick part. We want the, the big meaty part of the fillet. This evening, we're making blackened redfish. Sounds simple, everybody has their own version, but I'm gonna show you my own little twist on blackened redfish tonight. I call it redfish a la slow ride. And so let's go ahead on and get started. We have a little side dish of asparagus over here that's gonna be cooking along the way. We want that to be ready. The thing about cooking fish is you have to be very careful not to overcook it. It only takes five minutes once the fish hits the pan. But uh, the little preparation, the spices and things that are gonna go in is the big part of what makes this happen. So I like to cook my spices. I like to cook everything in the pan and then we're gonna drop the fish on top of that and one of the tricks to this is once those spices are cooked on the bottom when you scoop it up you're gonna pick up the cilantro which is the secret I'm gonna give it away right now so let's go ahead on and get started with the spices I start with some garlic some minced garlic we're gonna put that in the pan this is tomatoes onions green peppers and you want to make a nice layer in the pan for that then we're going to come back with some cilantro i like a nice little layer of cilantro and that is going to start to simmer and the trick to this is to get it simmering then you put your fish on it because you don't want it to overcook you don't want it to burn you want it to be perfectly crispy and turn over with the fish this is orange pepper with fish, you like some citrus. Some people will put lime on it. I like a little orange pepper. And then we have some lemon pepper. And you can see as we get going, things are starting to simmer in the pan a little bit. Just a little bit more spice. Then I'm gonna spread that out, get it nice and even across the bottom of the pan. And this starts to smell so good immediately. As these spices are cooking, everything is getting going. 
And I like to get it going on, on, a, on a warm fire, not too hot. You don't want it to burn. You want it to do about mid-range. And once this starts to simmer, you go ahead on and you drop your fillets in. I didn't mention in the beginning, but before I started with the veggies, I put a couple of pieces of butter, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. And as this cooks, as this starts to simmer, I'm going to actually add a little bit more butter to the edges. You don't want it to get dry, but you don't want it to be swimming in butter, so it's kind of a balance. So here we go. It's getting started, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, and I'm going to sprinkle what is going to be the bottom of the fillets with a little orange pepper. Just a little bit, little bit on each one. Then we're gonna come back with some more lemon pepper. Just a little bit of lemon pepper, just a nice little coating on each one. The asparagus over here on the side is doing good. And then I'm gonna come and I'm gonna add a little bit more cilantro to the top of the fish and that will end up that's going to be on the bottom when it flips. The thing about the cilantro, it cooks away to almost nothing. Once it starts cooking, it almost disappears. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with just a little bit of butter on the edges. A little bit over here, a little bit over here. I mentioned earlier, one of the tricks about cooking fish is not to overcook it. You see the edges start to get done. You don't want to see it come through too much to the top because it is going to continue cooking when you flip it. And whenever you turn off the fire, it also it's gonna continue cooking. So you want it to be just perfect to the middle where it's still nice and flaky. Blackened redfish, it can be sometimes too spicy. Um, some people go a little crazy with the Cajun spice. This is blackened redfish, but it's just a variation on that recipe. So a few extra vegetables, a little bit more spices. And on this one, you see, I didn't add any Cajun spice at this point. At the very end, if somebody wants to make it spicy, they can sprinkle a little Tony's or a little something like that at the end. But we're just gonna keep it going. We're gonna keep it, keep it cooking, keep it moving. And there is a couple of thin pieces mixed in with the, the thicker ones, but we're going to let it get just right. Another trick to cooking fish is when it's time to flip it. It can get, it can start to get flaky. It can start to crumble. You don't want it to get past that point. When you flip it, you want to be able to scoop up that stuff on the bottom and you want it to all turn over together. I love working in the kitchen. It is so much fun to take what you caught and, um, and share it with your friends and family. A big part of the fun for me is always cooking up the catch. Really enjoy it. We are spoiled here in Aransas Pass with fresh seafood. We have shrimp boats that come in every day. We have amazing shrimp dishes. We have fish. Sometimes we kind of forget how spoiled we are here with the abundance of fresh seafood that we get to enjoy. And if you like a shrimp recipe, we like to do those too. If you want to see that in the future, let us know. And uh, we might not actually hook the shrimp, but we can certainly cook them. It's been on there about five minutes. And the total cooking time on this is usually about one beer. This is getting close. It's getting close to flipping time. Like I said, it did not take long. This is just maybe five minutes of cooking. And right here before I flip them, I'm going to turn the fire up on high. I'm going to get it cranking a little bit. I want everything to make sure it's crispy on the bottom. Here we go. The moment of truth. It's time to flip. You want it to all flip over and come over with your fish. All right, looking good. And then we're gonna come back with a little butter around the edges. Now, the, those crispy pieces, the crispy pieces are the ones that everybody's gonna be fighting over. Absolutely perfect. And at this point, I'm gonna turn the fire down to simmer and we're just gonna let it get all perfect to the middle. The side dish we're having tonight is the asparagus, really easy. Put a little garlic in there with them, a little Italian seasoning, and olive oil. Very simple, very easy. 
perfect side dish to go with seafood. We're keeping it really simple tonight. We're going with the fish, some veggies, but we do have this lovely peach tart for dessert tonight. And now this is simmering down. If you want to check it to know that it is cooked, you just go to the middle and if it flakes apart, it's done. So this one is starting to flake here. This one's just about done. But we're going to give this big piece and this big piece just a few more minutes. But these little ones are definitely ready to go. We just got them simmering on a low fire until we get the big ones perfectly done. And then I'm going to go ahead on and plate this and have a little taste test. Amazing smells in the kitchen tonight. As this starts going, it just fills up the house. I bet the neighbors next door are going to come over wondering what we're doing tonight. Try to get a bite. It's looking good. I'm going to go ahead on and I'm going to pull a little piece of this one. Looks absolutely perfect. Going to take another little piece, just a little extra for me. And then we're going to come over here, grab a couple of these little asparagus. And then if you want to be so fancy, you put your little dessert tart on the side. Very simple dish, very easy to cook, done in 15 minutes and enjoying the catch of the day. We appreciate y'all stopping in. Hope you enjoy our hook 'em and cook 'em episodes. We're going to do some more of these in the future. We have a lot of different fish recipes. The poncha train in an earlier episode, this one was a little bit easier than that. The poncha train pretty extensive, takes a little more preparation. This one is when you come home hungry and you're ready to eat. You don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. This one is super easy. So, thanks again for stopping in. I'm going to have a little taste test here. Mmm. Mmm. Wish I could share this with y'all, but we're going to see you next time. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to enjoy this dinner with some friends and family tonight, and we look forward to seeing you next time.